Friends, Dr. Randy Lane Bunch here with Connecting Point Communications. Once again, outdoors and off-road for our second installment of our healing series. Stay tuned. Well, hello, friends. Dr. Randy Lane Bunch here with Connecting Point Communications. As we said, and indeed, we're outdoors and off-road enjoying this beautiful weather the green hills a little bit chilly today but that's okay we've got our jacket and we're ready to go as we continue our series on the subject of divine healing last week we talked about the power of god to heal this week we want to talk about the healing gospel and a lot of what we're going to be sharing by the way comes out of our book the gospel saving power you can get this on amazon ibooks uh you can get it at barnes and noble wherever digital books are sold if you want a paperback copy though you're gonna to have to go to amazon you can get it there there's a second edition we encourage you to get that fix some of the typos that we had in the first edition so i want to encourage you to go to amazon and get the gospel saving power a lot of what we're going to be sharing today came uh, out of one of the chapters in particular on healing in the redemption we believe this will be a great blessing to you but we want to go ahead and take a look at the primary verse of scripture that we want to build on today and that's romans 1 16 where paul said for i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. So the gospel is the power of God. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, as Acts 10, 38 says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with power, went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we saw last week how the one with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment, made a demand on the power of God, and she was saved. Jesus said, woman, your faith has made you well. It's the Greek word sozo, your faith has saved saved you just like Romans 10 9 and 10 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised from the dead you'll be saved for with the heart man believes under righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation we hear the gospel faith comes to our heart faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God we respond to the gospel and the power of God saves us the power of the gospel saves us well this word salvation doesn't just mean spiritual salvation as we said C.I. Schofield and other scholars have uh, let us know that it implies the ideas of deliverance safety preservation soundness and healing and so the gospel is the power of God not only to save spiritually but to heal and like we said the word saved shows up several times in the gospels to show the physical physical side of salvation. Jesus told the one with the issue of blood in Mark uh, 5.34, uh, uh, daughter, your faith has made you well. Greek word sozo, your faith has saved you. He told blind Bartimaeus in uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 52, your faith has made you well. Your faith has sozo, your faith has saved you. The Bible said in James 5, 14 and 15, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save sozo, the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. So there's obviously a spiritual dimension of salvation when one is born again, but there's also this physical dimension of salvation when one is healed. And the process is the same. We hear the gospel, we respond to the gospel, and the power of God saves us or heals us. We saw a beautiful example of that last week in Acts chapter 14. Paul and his companions are in the cities of Lystra and Derbe, the cities of Lycaonia. They've been ran out of the last place by the Jews, and now they're here and they're preaching the gospel. Verse 7, in fact, says they were preaching the gospel there. Goes on to say in verse 8, and in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet, and he leaped and walked. Now when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying in the Lycaonian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. In other words, these people made the same mistake that we often make. Oh, Paul and Barnabas, they, they healed these folk. Well, no, they didn't. 
Uh, Paul didn't heal anybody here. What healed this man was the power of the gospel. Paul did three things. He preached the gospel. Number two, he saw the man had faith to be healed. And number three, he helped him act on his faith. The man did three things. He heard the gospel and faith comes by hearing. Number two, he had faith. Uh, to be healed. And number three, he acted on what he believed. And the power in the gospel saved him. Paul saw that he had faith to be sozo, saved, healed. It's salvation in a physical context. And so the question comes, what was this gospel that Paul was preaching? You think about it, friend. For the man, had to, to, for the man to have faith to be healed, Paul had to be preaching a healing gospel. There's no way around it. You don't get faith for healing by listening to a message on the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast. You get faith to be healed by hearing the gospel that includes healing because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So today we really want to focus on what is this gospel of healing. And to find that out, we want to go to the wonderful, amazing scriptures in Isaiah 53, so well known, maybe the most famous verses in the Old Testament or at least in the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah 53, we're going to look at verses 4 and 5. Now, mostly we're familiar with verse 5. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And because that word healed is there, and it's, by the way, the same Hebrew word rapha that we see in Exodus 15, 26, when the Lord said, I'll be the Lord your healer, I'll be your Jehovah rapha, because that word healed is in Isaiah 53, 5, when we think of healing in the atonement, we go right to Isaiah 53, 5 and said, see, he, he died and paid the penalty for our sins so that we can be reconciled and have peace with God and by his stripes we're healed. And that's all true. And that is a healing verse. But I'm going to submit to you, strangely enough, that the greater healing verse in Isaiah 53 is verse 4. Let me read verse 4 to you. And reading it in the English, it may not sound like much. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Now, Randy, that doesn't sound like much of a healing verse to me. Uh, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Well, that's certainly good news, but how does that speak to healing? Well, as a matter of fact, it does. In fact, those two words translated griefs and sorrows are koli and macabre. Two Hebrew words that really should have been translated sicknesses and pains. In fact, I have a little eight right by the word sorrows there. When I click it, it says literally pains. And if I go down, uh, oh, that's by sorrows. If I go up here to griefs, I have a little seven there, and it says literally sicknesses. So it should have been translated, surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. Now, I want to read to you out of my book, The Gospel Saving Power, a relatively long passage that will go into some detail proving what I'm saying to you. This is not just my idea or the idea of a handful of people who happen to believe in bodily healing and the atonement. This is the consensus of people who studied the Greek and Hebrew languages, particularly the Hebrew in this case. So I, I have quoted Isaiah 53, 5, which we read a while ago. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And then I pick up commenting on that verse. So this is what I said in the Gospel Saving Power. I think this is the chapter called Healing and the Redemption. It says this, Here again we see a full salvation for the total man. There is forgiveness of our sins to provide salvation by grace, peace for our soul, which answers the need of our mind and emotions, and healing for our physical bodies, a complete salvation. In his own epistle, Peter refers to this passage when writing about Christ's vicarious death on the cross, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed, 1 Peter 2.24. However, I believe that it is verse 4, Isaiah 53.4, that gives us a more complete message on the subject of healing and the atonement. The key is seeing it in the original Hebrew rather than in our English translations as they do not tell the full tale. And then I read Isaiah 53, 4 here. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. At first glance, this might not seem to be a message on healing in the atonement, except perhaps in the most indirect way. Sickness does bring grief and sorrow, but that by itself would be slim scriptural evidence to establish healing in the atonement. I think we'd all agree with that. However, the Hebrew words translated griefs and sorrows are koli and macabre and should be translated sickness and pains. 
Here are some places in the Old Testament where they are translated as such. Deuteronomy 7.15, And the Lord will take away from you all sickness, coli, and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt which you have known, but will lay them on those who hate you. Deuteronomy 28.61, Also every sickness, coli, and every plague which is not written in this book of the law will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. Isaiah 38.9, this is the writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and had recovered from his sickness, Coley. Man is also chastened with pain, Macab, on his bed with strong pain in many of his bones. This is the word actually Macab uh, in Job 33, 19. Babylon has suddenly fallen and been destroyed. Wail for her. Take balm for her pain, Macab. Perhaps she may be healed, Jeremiah 51, 8. So again, we can see how these words, Coley and Macab elsewhere, are translated faithfully sickness and pains. And in fact, some of the more current translations like the Christian Standard Bible, the New American American Standard Bible uh, 2020 uh, are now faithfully translating this sickness and pains because the biblical evidence is clear. And any literal translation you pick up will translate it as sicknesses and pains. In fact, let me read you out of my book, again, three translations uh, that, that show that. I, I go on to say this. These examples show clearly enough that these same words translated griefs and sorrows in Isaiah 53, 4 should have been translated sickness and pains. Many of the literal translations by some of our greatest Hebrew scholars have translated these words to reflect this idea. Surely our sicknesses he hath borne and our pains he hath carried them. And we, we have esteemed him plagued, smitten by God and afflicted. Isaiah 53, 4, Young's literal translation. But only our disease did he bear himself, and our pains he carried. Lesser's translation. That's Isaac Lesser. Surely our sicknesses he carried, and as for our pains, he bare the burden of them. That's uh, Rotherham emphasized translation. So both Young's, uh, Isaac Lesser, and Rotherham translate these literally and faithfully as sicknesses and pains. We go on to say this. While this scholarship is valuable in helping to confirm the true meaning of these Hebrew words, Coley and Macab, we have an even stronger proof of their meaning. Matthew, writing years later about the healing ministry of Jesus and under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, quotes Isaiah 53, 4 and leaves no question as to the meaning of these words and this verse. Now, this is a quotation from Matthew 8, 16 through 17. When the evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. If you look at any center column reference Bible and look at what Matthew is quoting, it will say Isaiah 53, 4. Matthew's not saying this is just spiritual healing. He's saying this pertained to the physical healing ministry of Jesus. And somebody might say, yeah, but Brother Randy, this is talking about Jesus healing in his ministry, not healing in the atonement. You know, this is Jesus healing before the cross. Yeah, but friend, he forgave sin before the cross too. Remember on several occasions, he told people, your sins be forgiven you. And yet he had not yet paid the penalty for that. But oftentimes, again, these things are given on a basis of a promissory note in the light of what God would provide in Christ. In fact, all the Old Testament benefits, friend, are, were given on the basis of what Christ would one day provide. They were given on the basis of a promissory note. We go on to explain that. No one disputes the fact that Matthew is quoting here from Isaiah 53, 4, as any center column reference in any reference edition Bible will confirm. We just said that. But what's most important is that Matthew's use of Isaiah 53, 4 leaves no question that the context of the verse is Christ's bearing of our sicknesses and pains on the cross. Matthew's use of this verse during Christ's earthly healing ministry is simply showing that these healings came on the basis of the redemption Christ would provide through his death on the cross. Whether these benefits were administered before or after Jesus actually died is not an issue, since in the mind of God, Christ was the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world, Revelation 5, 8. Again, healing is part and parcel of the redemption. Uh, Christ's bearing of our sicknesses was not some separate act from his dying for our sins. Sickness and disease is the physical result of the spiritual death 
that Adam introduced into man's experience through his sin, what we'd call original sin. Now, some have said sin is the root and sickness is the fruit. When Jesus died, totally satisfying our debt before God, balancing the scales of divine justice, he released us judicially from the effects of sin, physically and spiritually, temporally and eternally. Friend, that's why we have a basis to pray for the sick. If Jesus did not provide healing in the atonement and made it available by the grace of God, our faith could not appropriate it. And yet the Bible said the elders are to pray the prayer of faith that the sick might be saved or healed. So, so, right? Well, faith can only appropriate what grace has made available. You know, people are accusing us faith folk all the time of trying to use our faith to manipulate God. But friend, if you think you can get healing from God when he's not provided it in redemption, then you're trying to get something from God he didn't provide. No, in faith, we're only appropriating what God has clearly revealed as being a part of our inheritance. Now, I think that if we were to close the book now and stop the broadcast at 14 uh, minutes and 18 seconds in on the teaching portion, we could say, well, we've got a closed case because I think the scriptures clearly evidence the fact that Isaiah 53, 4 includes and really refers to the, the forgiveness not only of our sin, but the healing of our bodies as well. However, the evidence continues to mount. Let me read further in our, in our book here. Another thing to observe in the lines of Isaiah 53, 4 are the verbs translated born and carried. Remember, surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. They are the Hebrew words nasa and sabal, and both carry the meaning of bearing something as a punishment or chastisement. These same words describing Jesus' bearing of our sicknesses and pains are also used in this same chapter to describe his bearing of our sins as well. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear, Sabal, their iniquities, Isaiah 53, 11. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore, Nasa, the sin of many, Isaiah 53, 12. Again, the use of these verbs to describe both Jesus' sacrificial bearing of our sins and our sicknesses prove that when he died as our substitute to pay the full penalty for our sins, he provided both forgiveness for our sins and healing for our bodies. As David said in Psalm 103, 3, which we quoted earlier, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. This dual benefit is is often called the double cure and is understood in passages where the twin benefits of forgiveness and healing are seen to go hand in hand as in James 5 14 through 16 and others and that's where we mentioned uh, where the Bible says is there any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing with oil in the name of the Lord the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he's committed any sins he will be forgiven why because the same redemption provides both the forgiveness of our sins and the healing of our bodies he forgives all my iniquities he heals all my diseases. Friend, I could show you more and more scholarship commentaries who acknowledge that this vicarious nature of his bearing our sins is no different than the vicarious nature of his bearing our sicknesses and diseases. Friend, this was not two separate acts. Again, sin is the root, sickness is the fruit. When Jesus bore our sins on the cross and paid the penalty for them, he judicially released us from sin's power. And so now we can have healing, we can have peace of mind, we can have the forgiveness of our sins, we can can have a new creation spirit and one day thank god we're going to have a glorified body you know i look forward uh, to the upgrade every once in a while i'll upgrade my computers because the new software is too advanced for the old hardware well friend when you got born again you got some amazing software down on the inside of you you're a new creation it has capacities that are limited by this physical body but friend one day you're going to get a hardware update that will match the software update of your new creation nature and friend at that point i'm telling you the sky literally will be the limit you know i've had the privilege of preaching this gospel of healing all over the country uh, like I said last week, we preached in New England and a, and a woman hearing our message, having faith in her heart to believe, reached up by faith. And as we prayed the prayer of faith, she felt something like electricity and warm honey hit her in the crown of her head and her hands go down through her body and she was totally healed. But friend, that's one testimony of hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds. We've shared with you before how when the ministry first opened up to us in India, we began to broadcast the message, the gospel of healing. And one by one, tremendous testimonies began to come in. I'll never forget the story of a uh, Mrs. Gennett. Apathy. She wrote me about her grandmother and her daughter. Uh, and so three ger generations of gynapathies were listening to my broadcast. And her grandmother was deaf in one ear. They spent a lot of money trying to get that ear open. But uh, she heard this fast-talking preacher. She was going to try to go past me uh, with the channels. But 
once again, and this happened more than once, the, the, the TV froze on my program. So she had to listen to me preach. And she couldn't understand English, so she called her granddaughter in and said, what's that man saying? So the granddaughter is trying to interpret at my fast clip uh, what I'm preaching about, and I'm preaching about healing. And so Miss Ganapathy and her grandmother and granddaughter joined me in prayer at the end of the message. We prayed the prayer of faith, and that grandmother's ear was opened. They said, now what must we do? Do you have any pictures of Jesus you can send us so we can worship him? <laughs> that was their context. That was their understanding of how to worship the Lord. But again and again, we've seen the Lord show himself strong, show himself alive, and show himself a healer when we've simply preached the healing gospel and then prayed and believed God to respond in power. Friend, if you're ready to respond to this healing gospel, you can be healed. You can be saved, both in a spiritual and a physical sense. Now listen, we're only going to live in these mortal bodies, these death-doomed bodies, that's what the word mortal means, for a short time. And then, like I said, God's going to glorify these bodies, and they'll know no sickness, no disease. They'll know no death. Uh, they'll be impervious to sickness, disease, and death. But right now, we are in these mortal bodies, and so we pray for the healing. But friend, I'll tell you, the most important thing is that you're born again because heaven and hell is forever. Everybody's gonna live forever. It just depends on what neighborhood you're gonna live in. So we want you to go to heaven. We want you to know Jesus. We want you to be born again. We want you to have a relationship with him. So why don't you pray a simple prayer right now and receive Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Would you do that? Pray with me just like this. Just say, dear Jesus. That's it, just say it out loud. Dear Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you died to pay the penalty for my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I put my faith and trust in you. Jesus, take over management of my life. Thank you for saving me. Friend, if you pray that prayer, I would like you to email me. Would you email me at info at connectingpc.org? I'd like to stand in faith with you. And also, don't forget, go to our website, randylanebunch.org. We haven't talked about that yet in the broadcast, I don't think. But go to our website, randylanebunch.org, under the media link. Friend, we have hundreds upon hundreds of hours of resources. We have at least 100 podcasts. We have like 141 television broadcasts. You can go back and listen to our entire healing school. We have a digital healing school on audio also under that media link. And of course, we have our magazine, our blogs, so much rich information there at randylanebunch.org under the media link. And all of it is free of charge. Now, if you want to buy our book, The Gospel Saving Power, you can go to Amazon and just simply search Randy Lane Bunch. If you do that, you'll find all of our books. We've got a couple of devotional books. We've got this book. We've got a wonderful book on the subject of tongues in our local bookstore. They can't keep it in stock. It sells out again and again and again called Tongues, Speaking to God in a Supernatural Language. Maybe you want to purchase all of them. That would be great. But go to Amazon and just look for Randy Lane Bunch and you'll find all of them if you want a paper about paperback edition of the gospel saving power. That's the only place that you can find it. But I want to pray for those of you that have a physical need. We preach the gospel and we're expecting God to come through in power and show himself strong on your behalf. Are you ready? Get ready to receive. Father, right now I pray for my friends who've watched the broadcast with us today. Some of them may have cancerous tumors. Maybe they've been given a bad diagnosis by the doctor and they're not expected to live out the year. Lord God, I don't know what their condition is. It may be chronic conditions like a diabetic or arthritic condition. Uh, we've, we've seen people, Lord, healed of the incurable. Father God, right now, I, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I thank you, Father, for that anointing. I just sense it right now, people. Father, go through this camera, go through this device into their homes, in their devices. Reach through this medium, Father God, and touch them. We know you don't need these devices to reach people. But Father, right now, as they're responding in faith to the gospel, we ask you to extend your healing hand to them. Right now, as they're hearing and listening and believing and responding, quicken bodies, heal them. Father, we break the oppression of the devil on the minds of people. We thank you in the name of Jesus for the authority we have to do so. We thank you, Father God, that you have reconciled us into yourself and authorized us as your agents in heaven to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. And we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus for manifesting your power now. Father God, as a kingdom agent, I declare healing, deliverance, preservation, soundness, provision. We thank you that you are our Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. We thank you, Lord, for supernaturally touching the people at the point of their need right now. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance, healing, and soundness. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 
Yeah, thank you, Father God, for clearing up those throat problems, restoring people's, and even vocal cord damage. We thank you, Father God, for totally restoring that area of the body. Thank you, Lord God, even up into the jaw, maybe tibular meningitis. We thank you for ministering healing to that, Lord God. Crooked spines made straight, made whole, made sound. Bodies made sound. Crooked limbs being straightened. We thank you, Lord God, for touching them in every area of their body. We give you thanks and praise for it, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friend, we're glad that you tuned in today. We've got more to talk about on the subject of healing, but I want to remind you, go to the website, randylanebunch.org. Under the media link, again, you're going to find a lot of resources, hundreds and hundreds of hours of material that will bless you, like one of my old spiritual fathers, Lester Summerall, used to say, when you feed your faith, you starve your doubts. Just let your doubts die. One other thing, don't forget to go to our channel, Off-Road Adventures. That's why we come out here and we film. We have a wonderful channel called offroadadventures.org. We would love for you to go there and enjoy some of the off-road content. We also have some devotionals there that we believe would be a great blessing to you. So check out the devotionals, check out the scenic photography, and you can email us there also at info at offroadadventures.org. Let us know what you think about the content. If you'd like more information about that ministry, by all means, we would love to connect and correspond with you. So email us at info at offroadadventures.org for information about that. But again, we would love to hear from you at info at connectingpc.org about the testimonies you have. If God has touched you, healed you, somehow minister to you through this broadcast, we want to know about it. So reach out to us, friend, and let us know. Well, we've got more, as we said, on the subject of healing that's coming very shortly on the broadcast. So thank you for joining us today. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you next time on Connecting Point. Hey friends, Dr. Randy Lane Bunch here. Welcome to offroadadventures.org and welcome to what Marie and I kind of consider to be our backyard. Many of you have been following us on our journeys, on our off-road adventures, and we just kind of wanted to formally invite you to join us at offroadadventures.org. Here you're going to find some good substantive content to inspire and challenge you spiritually, as well as just some beautiful scenic photography and some wonderful stories. Hopefully we'll have some contributors also uh, supplementing our content to the webpage so that it can be a blessing to you, to your friends, and to any that are interested in making this journey of life the most that it can be. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And we just want you to join us as we go through this journey of life together, enjoying the things that God has entrusted to us, the beauty of his creation, as well as his word. And so we hope you'll join us at Off-Road Adventures. Enjoy the content, give us some feedback, and always, always enjoy the journey. God bless. Thank you.